you know, this is why it's so important, I think, to have this frame of Team Human and to kind of go back to this, this source material of Doug. And I wanted to read the beginning of the Team Human book because I think it's so timely for this moment. And so anyways, it starts off like this. Anonymous technologies, runaway markets, and weaponized media has seemed to overturn civil society, paralyze our ability to think constructively, connect meaningfully, and act purposefully. It feels as if civilization itself were on the brink. Actually, it doesn't feel that way. It, it seems like it actually is <laughs> right now in this moment. And that we lack the collective will and coordination necessary to address the issue's vital importance to the very survival of our species. It doesn't have to be this way. And just that how that ends right there, it doesn't have to be this way. I hope if anything could come out of this moment is that at least a few more people could realize that sentiment that it doesn't need to be this way. Everyone is asking how we got here, as if it was random slide towards collective incoherence or disempowerment. It is not. The reason we are in our current predicament, an anti-human agenda embedded in our technology, in our markets, in our major cultural institutions, from education and religion to civics and media, has turned them from forces of human connection and expression to one of isolation and repression. By unearthing this agenda, we render ourselves capable of transcending its paralyzing effects, reconnecting to one another, remaking society towards human ends rather than the end of humans. It's funny that in this weird, absurd moment of, of time that we're in, that us forcing ourselves for our, our physical health to be isolated that maybe in a paradoxical way, we could return to getting back within ourselves, but also to using these moments and not using these these technologies and the internet as distracting or isolating us anymore, but we're gonna get so bored that we're gonna use it like, hey, we could use this to connect with each other. We could use this to actually be social with each other instead of just, you we use social media as advertisement we're not it's not a social networking but it, like for the first time some of these groups that were just like dead are actually being used to share information and i see like little inklings of actually being social and that's has been like always um i guess a mandate for imaginarium you know it's almost like through this period of being forced to be separate from one another because we, we're all in lockdown and we've got to self-isolate and everything you know when this whole scare passes it will make people appreciate the whole thing of actually being together in real time mm-hmm. as opposed to just communicating on social media so my guess is people I will think, start think, think... have like a big reunions and parties because yeah. This, this period has ended and they go right we can all be together now because the the main part of the danger has passed so it could actually bring people together I think, I think in, in real time because they'll appreciate that more i think too you know just like it's natural for us going about our lives that we take things for granted and it's not in, until you know absence makes the heart grow fonder or whatever but or when, when things like this happen and this, I don't think this has ever happened, at least as far as in, in modern time, like of uh, this scale, like happening in, in this dramatic way. But that it puts things in perspective. It, like w- the minute it kind of happened or as it was happening, my first initial thoughts was to my direct like family. And of course, like my, my grandma and then and then like, uh, a couple of my aunts that are older and, and kind of sick to make sure that they're all right and to make sure they're good. Like, I, it is so funny that it just kind of, like, happened. I, I really don't for, even though I know I could be better at this, but 
for the most part, I don't have much regrets. I don't take much things for granted. I don't have much, but it, that's a little bit by design for me to really be like, I've been thinking this way for at least two years. Like, what is actually uh, necessary for me as wanting to be a fully human being? What do what do I need? And and constantly focusing on that like necessity and not of this like like stressful illusion of like oh i need to get this i need to do that i need to do this do i really want to do that like why am i so stressed out about this like why do i why am i like turning on this hamster wheel like do i really want all this stuff do i really need all this stress do does this even really matter and what does really matter to me and um so that means, you know, at least once a week I see my grandma. So, like, as as when this happened, I don't, I don't want to, like, go visit her because I want – she's old and I want to make sure that she's she stays safe. But, you know, we call her. And I saw her, you know, just before the day it happened when California locked down. So I see her so frequently and I don't take her for granted that I'm not like, oh, I wish I, I saw her. And I had this weird moment with my aunt. So it was raining here. And this was just before, I think, um, I think I, I remember my aunt saying that she got that call that day from from her her health insurance company telling her that she shouldn't go outside. As probably like, it was like a day or two before the shutdown or maybe the shutdown happened that, that night. Anyways, she calls and, and she says that she has a leak in her roof. And they're they're older, and she has arthritis. They have a lot of different problems. My aunt and my uncle, and they they asked if if I could go down and help them move some furniture and do some stuff for them because my my uncle is probably going to throw out his back. And so I go over there and and I see them, and you know I was a little worried, and and so like I help them out, and then I remember when we're about to leave, I say bye to my aunt. And I hug her and, t- and tell her I love her and everything. And then um, I went out and I was like, oh, man, should I really have hugged her? Should I really done that? And I was like, oh, I think everything's safe. But then the opposite question came into my head. It was, what if, maybe that moment didn't happen, but what if something does happen in the near future? I think I would have, would have, and I don't know the answer to this. And I think you just have to be what uh, all right with whatever it is. But would I regret it more not actually hugging her and saying I loved her? If God forbid something happens to her and she does not make it through this time, you know? And this is like all these like weird little things of what actually matters to you. But at the same time, if you don't take these relationships and these things that actually matter to you for granted. I think whatever does happen, you you can square those circles within yourself and that you can be all right within your own skin and you can be all right with your own relationships. And really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And besides the physical people and then my friend, Rosie, who kind of lives far and I kind of hit her up and said, make sure she's a ride and kind of joked around. Then right after that, my next two thoughts were you guys and that you guys are like as real as them. And that this already enrichment that we have of this weird disembodied uh, connection is I think this weird space that hopefully more and more people can discover. And I think it's that, that's that this is this natural inclination. We have this natural thing about being connected to, you know, you know, like little kids want to, want to constantly touch you and constantly be like connected, like physically connected to you. And that maybe your kid was like sensing this, this thing that there's this new space in hyperspace in in this internet there's there's the imaginarium space in which you can have 
a new form of connection and it is as interesting and as real as these physical connections is different it's 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 a little bit more fluid and a little bit more fleeting but there there is this whole area that we are so like subconscious about but that that we can have this interesting whole other experience this whole other depth uh to reality but it's it's not even i i I keep on more and more not liking it to like some other i i think that is so core and natural to to actual existence and experience and life that that we have eluded ourselves with these false narratives and this this programming that we can't even uh, a lot of times identify the real. We we view the real, the core essence of ourselves as something other, when it's actually no. It's more closer to the core of our being. It's not this higher consciousness. No, it's just shred. Uh, not no filter actual existence and the other stuff is is the mask is is this noise that we put on top of it the clothing the the colors and everything like that but the what i refer to the heartbeat of the universe is this strange thing that is what can really be kind of leverage explored uh, you know there was this this whole thing that i had about if i could find it real quick and um it's something about like artists and, and writing and stuff like that and so this comes from this article that douglas wrote about uh a Genesis Peoria, uh, Peoriage uh, from Psych TV. He recently passed away. But anyways, he's revisiting this article. And he says, if you're going to be an artist, a writer, or a writer, you got to navigate through some treacherous zones. If you're not transversing new territories, or at least forgetting forgotten territories, then why write instead of reading? And many of these regions, uh, regions can be, uh, and can be culturally, intellectually, physically, and psychically challenging disoriented disorientation can be uh, avoided it is the rule pan you can't avoid the dissertation it is the rule panic is the one thing you have to watch out for and th- these these weird little areas can be and should be explored and i mean i don't think it's i i don't have the words to describe but i know you both have experienced it and even when i was telling like doug about what i wanted to do i was just like uh i just need to show you <laughs> like i i don't want to talk about it i want to do it and what doing it is yeah part of the 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 end product is the videos but the actual process is is being open and vulnerable and willing to play in this disembodied way with you too and and with other people that are open enough to to be in that space i feel like that's really hard to find yeah like a lot of people talk the talk and i mean they can talk the talk for a good long while but when it really comes down to it they're afraid to open up and be vulnerable and really show who they are inside and maybe they don't know who that is maybe it's a self-awareness issue 
And I feel like doing what we do is going to bring more self-awareness. But if you're afraid to know who you are, you know, when it gets dark out, you know, then you're not going to be motivated to do what we do. And, you know, you know, this, this kind of goes into this other thing I was talking to Meg about. Remember, I was saying, oh, I'm not really good at, uh, I'll, I'll pour at this thing. And we're kind of talking about, oh, who's going to show up today? I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. and then she's like, what do you, what do you mean you're poor at what? I mean, I guess event organizing. I don't know. And like, or even like promoting our, our content. And for me, the content, even though I like it, I enjoy it. They're like little magical spells and artwork that I, I, I actually view later. And I, I'm like, oh my God, that was so cool. And even recently I, I reminded an old um, open mic night and um, censorship sucks says, Oh my God, thanks for replaying that. I was so cool to like re-experience that moment. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so like, you know, it's all trying to capture these moments. Right. But I'm always chasing another, another moment. I'm always chasing another thing There's to wrestle. And, you know, like, and there's so much right now. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm not too concerned about everybody viewing our shit or viewing my my work i'm i'm trying to create another moment this another connection and wrestle down this other feeling and and doing this other thing so i don't really i i i don't care in the in the best possible sense uh if you know i'm doing these videos and and creating this stuff and and it's not even about the actual uh, content or the art. It's more of these creating these experiences. And I, I think having this space, then it just, it's a byproduct of, of this being more human, being more of myself and honestly engaging with people. And it doesn't even matter how many people I engage with that in this honest way, that's what makes it real just as real as my my experiences in in actual reality that with my with my friends that i hear with all my loved ones like that's why my mind went to like i hope everything's good on your side of the planet and everything's good with you guys just as much as i was worried about like my grandma well you guys actually grandma comes first and then you guys you know but uh my mind i went to there and even in that moment, all of the nonsense and noise goes away. Oh, okay. This is the things that actually are meaningful and because I'm worried about them and concerned about them. Like my heartstrings get pulled to my lo- my actual loved ones in physical reality and then in the imaginarium space, right? But you know, to also to in in the other respect, and I I know I I don't have to say this, but I I want to kind of like express this for for future future others that might come into this space is is not in in a naive way that I pursue this because part of being all right in your own skin, uh, at least for me, is to know when it's worth it for your own self to be open to, to other people. Like in, in one respect, I, I am as much as anybody here on mine's open and, and um, inviting to people, but I am not going to waste my time if they're not there, if I don't feel they are where I'm at and I, I'm not going to like, People no one... only give as much as they give. Yeah, and you know, like I, I really I, had to learn that. And I, yeah, I, I want, I want more people, and there, there's certain people that I do kind of miss interacting with on this kind of like level, you know, like Gus Spiders or whatever. But I'm all right. I like, I'm all right with them doing what they got to do. You know, like I always have this thing: is it's still the fucking internet? Like, handle your shit, and like. When I tell Rose, hey, what's up? How are you doing? I don't know. Well, you better fucking find out. <laughs> better get your shit together, homie. 
get your shit together. No, but you know, and so like at the same time, I think, and you know, no, uh, of course, I don't have it uh, perfect or anything, and no one does perfectly beautiful. Uh, per, uh, what is it? Beautifully imperfect. <laughs> But you know, there 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 is something to, and I don't even want to institutionalize it, but I think just us being um, authentic and creating this culture of being authentic, because yeah, it, the the distractions, the 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 drama, and all this other stuff stuff could easily poison this space um, that you know, that I want. And I, I've seen it come and go in, in all sorts of small fashions that can only get amplified more. But there's there's something interesting. One time, what Doug said was that humanity happens peer to peer, and I think in this way, these small little and I think they they build upon each other too because you know even Elliot in his small little way of doing the post and he creates this this whole other like take on something that i go wild with and i don't need much to go wild with but i i need this kind of like you know you know i'm not so much concerned with myself in a lot of ways but i'm concerned yeah. with all these other like perspectives and perceptions and yeah. these other things that when I, s I see it, I'm like, oh, that's that's so good. Even if I don't know necessarily totally agree with it, I, I still find it interesting. And you, of course, you, yeah, you only have... That's, that's kind of you know, like a point in maturity that you reach, you know, where you're no longer looking at yourself and, and your own thoughts and acting on your your like how you would feel and how you would think and you begin to seek out not just what you think other people would think but you really want to know what does yeah. this person think you know what do these these groups think what does what does that mean you know what does that mean to someone else what does it mean to those people you know like there and it, it just widens you up in a way that i think only uh psychedelics can really make you widen up I don't think it's like a natural thing. I think it's something that like when you take psychedelics, the way that it activates the chemicals in your brain, it triggers these. No, it, it goes yeah, to factor, uh, factory uh, reset. You know, that's, that's yeah, the... it really does. And it's, it's so amazing. Anonymous technologies, runaway markets and weaponized media has seemed to overturn civil society, paralyze our ability to think constructively connect meaningfully and act purposefully it feels as if civilization itself were on the brink actually it doesn't feel that way it, it seems like it actually is <laughs> right now in this moment and that we lack the collective will and coordination necessary to address the issues vital importance to the very survival of our species it doesn't have to be this way and just that how that ends right there it doesn't have to be this way i hope if anything could come out of this moment is that m at least a few more people could realize that sentiment that it doesn't need to be this way everyone is asking how we got here as if it was random slide towards collective incoherence or disempowerment it is not the reason we are in our current predicament, an anti-human agenda embedded in our technology, in our markets, in our major cultural institutions, from education and religion to civics and media, has turned them from forces of human connection and expression to one of isolation and repression. By unearthing this agenda, we render ourselves capable of transcending its paralyzing effects, reconnecting to one another, remaking society towards human ends rather than the end of humans. <laughs>